Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. Where's your witness? In the evidence. That's hearsay. It's notarized. I still say it's hearsay. She's fair. You gotta help these young men learn how to do this the right way. Yes, Your Honor. She's firm. Can I say something, Your Honor? No, okay. I don't need to say anything else. She's honest. I'm not your child and I'm not your friend. That's the order of the court. Goodbye. This is Justice with Judge Maybelline. All rise. Both parties raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. This is the matter of Kia Chapman versus uh, Marion Rush. I am told that you're asking for $748.80 because of a panic attack that you had when you were thrown a baby shower that you asked not to take place. Yes, Your Honor. I am okay. suing Miss Marion for throwing a baby shower that caused me emotional distress. Wow. That's an interesting theory. How did that happen? Well, Your Honor, uh, we moved to Birmingham, Alabama a little over a year ago, me and my husband. And um, I sought out a local church, uh, you know, to find some lady friends. And that's where I met Sister Marion. And um, she was very inviting. You know, she took me up under her wing. She was just like a big sister to me. She throws all the events and, you know, I even helped her do some events and stuff. And her husband is the minister for the youth. And, um, you know, I found out that I was pregnant. And so um, I was having a horrible first trimester. Um, I took a break and I was getting really sick, so I took a hiatus from church. I didn't go for about a few weeks. And once I got the confidence to go back to church, I was showing a little bit. So a few of the ladies uh, congratulated me. And then Sister Marion took it upon herself to make a huge announcement and um, announce to the church that I was pregnant. And, you know, I really didn't appreciate that because I was trying to stay low key. And, um, after the service, she came up to me and said, you know, what do you want to do for your baby shower? And I let her know that I did not want a baby shower. And so she took it upon herself after, you know, I kind of forgot about the whole thing. And so after a few months went by, I was eight months and uh, we're having lunch after service. And I walk outside and everybody's screaming surprise. And um, Sister Marion was right in the forefront, the one throwing baby shower. So they surprised, said surprised and had a whole lot of gifts for you, right? Yes. And so what happened as a result of that? Um, okay, so when I first got to the baby shower, I just, my anxiety was so high. Um, it was just so much attention. My husband was right there trying to help me cope with what was going on. And, you know, I just, um, I tried to just ride it through and enjoy myself. And I didn't want the ladies to feel unappreciated because I really did appreciate everything. And um, that night when I went home, I just had the biggest panic attack. And, you know, it's just like I was just having so much anxiety and my mind was racing that my husband talked to me and we decided that I should go to therapy. And I went to therapy for four weeks. I did eight sessions twice a week. And um, they put me on anxiety medicine, which made me more worrisome because I was so late in my pregnancy. And um, after that, I did have a healthy baby boy. Thank God for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Amen. the seven hundred and forty-eight dollars is the cost of the uh, the therapy. Yes, after insurance. Okay. May I see that bill? And prior to that, you had never been in therapy. No. Prior to that occurrence. No. Prior to that occurrence, were you aware of having anxiety attacks? Uh, no, not on an extreme level. So. A lot of people in front of you, happy, uh, congratulations, singing something, your praise, whatever, that's too, that's overwhelming. Yes, it's um, very sensitive, my pregnancy. I was trying to keep it to, you know, myself. It wasn't something that I wanted to share with um, a new community like that. Is there a reason? Were you afraid you may lose the baby and you didn't want to get too excited? Um, so previously to us moving to Birmingham, we did, we conceived, and we, I had a very rough pregnancy. And um, late in the pregnancy, I, ha I did have a miscarriage, and I lost the baby at eight months. So, 
um, Sister Marion throwing the baby shower, you know, it was around the same time, eight months. It was something that I really didn't want to just, um, you know, deal with everyone kind of, you know, in my little bubble that I was having. You know, it was kind of something me and my husband wanted to experience ourselves just in case because I didn't want all the expectations, you know, of, you know, the whole congregation of me having a healthy baby just in case if something didn't happen, right? Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. You didn't respect what she had said, but out of the kindness, I meant no malice, Judge Maybelline, no malice, I, I, just you know what? simply I, out of the kindness of my heart. And later... We held on to each other. He began pushing me uh, until his force wound up driving us both through the screen door. We're back with the case of Kia Chapman, who is suing Marianne Rush for emotional distress. Did you, were you aware of uh, her desire not to have a baby shower? I was completely unaware. I had no idea. See, Judge Maybelline, uh, uh, Miss Chapman is kind of a quiet person. When I introduced her, introduced myself to her at our church, she was withdrawn. So I took a liking to her. Cause she was withdrawn? Yes. I wanted to take her under my wing and try to help her to show her that this uh, Greater Ebenezer is a place where she can be supported in her endeavors. So I invited her to my house for dinner. I did. Her and her husband. I am responsible for hospitality at the church, so I organized luncheons after church service. I made sure that her and her husband felt welcome at the luncheons. But, Judge, I had no idea of her difficulties in her pregnancies. When I saw that she was pregnant, I, I then went to her and asked her, uh, what kind of things she liked. Mm -hmm. So I welcomed her. Now, when you showed her all these things and asked her what did she want to happen, what was her response? She withdrew. Okay, but so that let you know she wasn't interested in you doing that. Judge, I just attributed to her being shy. That's mm -hmm. all. Because, again, when I introduced myself to her, mm -hmm. you know, she was kind of pulled back behind You said she was shy and withdrawn. Yes, yes, I understand that. But, you know, sometimes people say things they just don't mean. And sometimes they say things they mean. Yes, I suppose so. But, again, I had no idea about her difficulty. Right. But she did. Pregnancy. She said, I don't want a baby shower. But, Judge Maybelline, you know how they do this. Yeah, people the, say things that they... You, we say, oh, they don't really mean that. That's because that's what you like. Mm -hmm. And that's your personality. And all on the internet, you know how they have the gender reveal and mm -hmm. they, they have all the parties. Mm -hmm. that, things that I didn't do as a young Me either. But, and some of them don't like it. Some of the young, she didn't want that. And, and she doesn't have to explain to you why. You didn't respect what she had said. But out of the kindness, I meant no malice, Judge Maybelline, no malice. I, I, Just you know what? simply I, out of the kindness of my heart. You know that. Mm -hmm. You're not saying she did it maliciously, are you? Not at all. I just feel like Sister Marion did not respect my boundaries. Mm -hmm. and um, I That's let... that word, respect my boundaries. That's what she told me. That phrase. Mm -hmm. Woo! Respect my boundaries. And once I let it be known I didn't want a baby shower, then that's Who what did it you is. tell that you didn't want a baby shower? Sister you said Marion, that to her when she asked. She asked. It... She didn't even ask me if I wanted a baby shower. She said, what do you want to do for your baby shower? Mm -hmm. And then I let her know I don't want a baby shower. And you didn't think that she really meant that? No, mm. I did not. I just thought she had just came to the community and she was just feeling a little apprehensive mm -hmm. about engaging right. with everyone, being new to our community. Yeah. But you know, it cost, it cost her some medical issues. And, that's and, a, and it really, you know, depending on her mental state, it could have sent her overboard. But that's the purpose of the church. Why didn't she come to the church for counseling? She could have received that same counseling at church. That's why we're there to because love and embrace. Because you know why she didn't come to the church for counseling? Mm. Because she has free will and she chose not to come to the church. For I counseling. understand. She go to counseling where she wants to go to counseling. That's the, here you go again. Why didn't she come to the church for counseling? Because 
You say the church offers that, and that's the place where you go for healing, for counseling. Mm -hmm. You should go to the church, to the minister, to the sisterhood, whatever. That's your thought pattern. Again, you're not respecting her right. Look, I'm a part of that drill. I used to be, Mm -hmm. but I know better now. Mm -hmm. I keep getting educated every day. That's why I love this job. And that's why I love dealing with people. Mm-hmm. So you, you sent her into a medical issue. Thank God it wasn't as bad because the baby could have been damaged. You know? So now since the church, you did that as part of the church, the yeah. church's hospitality, mm-hmm. you can go back to the church and say, we need to pay for her therapy session. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to order you to do it. And I believe that if you go to the church and explain that the minister will, they'll take it out of the church's funds because you did that as a gesture of hospitality for the church. It was a good thought. Thank you. So the judgment is for the plaintiff, pay the $748. Oh yeah, you did bring me that receipt. Yes, $748 and 80 cents. And sometimes during pregnancy, your, 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 your mental state is more fragile than others. And then other states of mind, uh, other times in your life, and your, your uh, uh, adrenaline and your endorphins and all of that stuff is just everywhere. You know, and sometimes you're much more fragile in terms of that during pregnancy. So be aware of that as well, okay? Okay. So judgment for the plaintiff. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $748.80. I know you didn't do it out of malice, and um, I forgive you. I just really hope you learn your lesson. Well, I guess you're never too old to learn. Coming up. Um, At the end of my father's life before he passed, there was more toxicity than usual between the two of them. Um, And Jake was asked not to come to the funeral. In the matter of Mike Duke versus Jake Masters, I understand the two of you are suing each other and alleging that both of you, it's a cross complaint basically, you say he hit me first, you say he hit me first and I hit back and the screen door got broken, so just tell me the story. Uh, The story is my father, our father, passed away recently, Jake's my half brother. Uh, his relationship okay. with my father was strained. Um, at the end of his life, my now, father... What did you say about the strained? Their relationship. Your father and the defendant's relationship was That's strained? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. So despite my father's best efforts to be in Jake's life, um, they were rebuffed throughout his lifetime. Um, the only time they ever saw or spoke really was over finances and money. Mm -hmm. Um, At the end of my father's life, before he passed, there was more toxicity than usual between the two of them. Um, And Jake was asked not to come to the funeral. Uh, That was a request by my father. So Jake was at the funeral, at least the reception at my house. Yeah, I didn't show up at the funeral. So was he at the funeral or the repast? He was at the reception at my house after the funeral. Okay. On the same day. All right. Uh, Things were good for about a half an hour. He was talking with some of the other family members, and then he made his way over to me, to which I thought we would potentially have a bury the hatchet moment, some sort of kumbaya. Um, It started out that way for a sentence or two until he quickly dropped into finances and money and what was his and what was left, which was annoying in and of itself uh, for many reasons, but then he approached me closer and closer. He got into my personal space. I asked him and I extended my arms just to get an arm's length from him. He pushed me. And that's when he pushed me. Coming up. Why did you bother to go? Well, I just wanted to, you know, get some closure for the whole situation. Never really. You wanted to know if he had left you any money, even though he was a boot, uh, not the great father, you didn't get along. You wanted to know if you had anything coming. We're back with the case of Mike Duke, who is suing his half brother, Jake Masters, for property damage. You extended your arm to get him away from you. And he extended his arm to get you away from him. His was aggressive. His came with loud words. Um, he got aggressive quickly. We held on to each other. He began pushing me uh, until his force wound up driving us both through the screen door. Let me hear your side. Well, I don't really know my half-brother. 
his dad uh, lied to my mom, got her pregnant. And, and both of you don't know, you know what the hell happened between your mother and father. I don't want to hear either of it because right. you don't know. Yeah. Okay. So years went by. I got older. Uh, he tried to have some kind of relationship because I have married with kids as well. Okay, so why are we talking about, I guess it has, it has significance to why you were at, if he was such a terrible person, didn't want to be bothered, didn't like your children, didn't like you, then why you show up at the repast? Yeah. I didn't ask you. <laughs> I didn't ask you. Sorry, Your Honor. I don't need your help. Why did you bother to go? Well, I just wanted to, you know, get some closure for the whole situation. Never really. You wanted knew. to know if he had left you any money, even that though too, he was yeah. a boot, uh, not yeah. the great father. You didn't get along. You wanted to know if you had anything coming. Yeah. Just tell it like it is. Yeah, that is. I mean, okay. I wanted to see, you know. And plus, I was also planning on talking to him and stuff like that. But then yeah. he got aggressive with me. First off, I did not yell at him. I didn't do anything aggressive. He pushes me after yelling in my face. And then when I push him back, he grabs onto my shirt and starts tussling around. And he, he's always been kind of a klutzy little guy. So he ends up falling through the screen door. And I don't think that's my fault. That if you put right. your hands on me first, I have every right. Judge Maybelline's verdict when justice with Judge Maybelline returns. When you approached him, how did you approach him? Well, he approached me. Oh, he came so over and not, to me. his version says you came up to talk to him. My no. version is the correct version. I mean, his version is the fantasy version where he's always right, just like his dad was always right. I, I, it's question of push shove, who pushed who first, who touched who first. You admit that you touched him first, but you explain your touching as I wanted to get him out of my face, so I just sort of pushed, you know, you didn't even say push, extended my arms. But it's still a touching. The extension of your arms became a touching because you touched his body. He then extended his arms a little bit more in a different manner and touched your body. Then you began, you all began a tug of war. You know, you you're gonna fight now. Well no, you grabbed a hold and of And in shirt. doing so, you tussling, you you're moving around, and you hit the screen door. Mm -hmm. And you break your screen door. Mm -hmm. I say both of you are responsible. Each pay half to get the screen door repaired. That's the judgment. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay two hundred thirty-six dollars. You, you, you shouldn't have been there. So you, you provoked, and then you got what you're coming. You, you got what you came for in the end. And I don't know why you're surprised. I'm surprised that I had to pay anything at all. 